We gather again in this time and space where all are welcome with your weariness, with your readiness, with your heartache and your gratitude. We gather during this time of holy days and usual festivity when now talk of time spent with family and loved ones can bring feelings of connection or of loneliness. We gather here and now where joy meets sorrow, where we let our grief be known out in the light of day and where we hold our tender hearts close. We gather today with memories of loved ones whose mark upon our lives cannot be erased, their steady presence gone now, yet their spirits and memories leaving legacies to carry on. We hold for one another this space of compassion and of acceptance for the complexities that come with the bonds of love, for the stories that form us, for all of who we are. Come, let us worship together. Our opening hymn is Comfort Me, and the words are simple enough and repetitive enough that I would invite you to make sure you're in gallery view. So if you're not sure where that is, it's the upper right-hand corner. And if you're in gallery view, you'll be able to see each other sing, which I think is, is a beautiful uh, thing, especially when we're not gathered in person. So I encourage you to do that, and I will line out each verse. Let us now light the chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. I invite you to light a chalice at home if you have one nearby, and I will light one here. In a time of grief, we light a flame of sharing, the flame of ongoing life. In this time, when we search for understanding and serenity in the face of loss, 
we light the sign of our quest for truth, meaning, and community. The lives of those who lived before us hold us steady. As we light our chalice, let us remember the flame they lit in us that is still glowing. Please join us now in saying our congregational covenant. We covenant to speak honestly and listen deeply to each other and the voice within. Treat each other with compassion and honor our differences. Take responsibility for the impact of our words, actions and inactions and what they have on each other. Support each other in times of need and of grief and celebrate the beauty and joy in our lives. To honor the gifts of the past and be gentle with each other as we grow. Encourage each other in the brave work of creating a more beloved community and a healthy, sustainable world. And forgive each other and start again. In this, our annual service of remembrance, we dedicate our shared time of worship to remember those family, friends, and loved ones who have gone before us. We light candles and say aloud their names. And in this simple way, we bring them and the memories that we carry into the present and into the loving space of this community. There will be three times during this morning's service that we will engage in a ritual of saying names and lighting candles. These times of candle lighting will be interspersed with music and a few moments of silent meditation. And as you will see, we have adapted this traditional service to our virtual Zoom format. Even in this need of adaptation, there is some grief as we acknowledge the loss of not being in one another's physical presence and also of not having the hospice choir singing with us as they traditionally do. I invite you to hold this grief tenderly and to engage as fully as possible in this adapted service. When I was a student at New England Conservatory, Marcus Thompson, the violist there, told me how he had played it at a concert on the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated in tribute to him. 
this story has stayed with me, adding a layer to a piece that already holds so much in its apparent simplicity. I love how music connects and interconnects these stories, events, emotions, memories, and people.
And I invite you now to join me in prayer. Spirit of life, unfolding mystery whose truth is never fully grasped. Source of love, connecting us all. With hearts open wide, we rest now in your quiet embrace. As we name aloud those who have gone before us, as we sit in quiet stillness alongside these companions, we are aware of the fragility of life. We know that even with our strength and resilience and durability, we are also tender and breakable and our time upon this earth is brief. Each life has its fullness, its complex intermingling of triumphs and happiness and of sadness, perhaps even despair. And each life eventually comes to an end. On the cusp of World AIDS Day, let us remember the millions of people whose lives have been taken by this disease. Let us hold in our hearts those who continue to endure the hardships and suffering caused by HIV and AIDS, including the social stigma that endures alongside the devastation of the body. We are mindful, O oh Spirit, that we are in the midst of another pandemic as COVID-19 takes the lives of far too many, we hold in our hearts all of those who have felt the pain and the diminishment of this disease, whose lives have been cut short, and all who are mourning their deaths. Spirit of unending compassion and grace, we are indeed fragile beings. In our fragility, help us to know how and by whom we are held with love and care. Help us to extend our compassion to others. And with these connections, may we know ourselves strengthened. May each of us be an embodiment of love through all our days in this delicate turning of living, breathing, and dying. May peace find us again and again, even here, even now. And let us join in a time of silent meditation at the close of which we will join in singing Spirit of Life.
Close our, uh, close our candle lighting ritual, please join me in this litany of remembrance. You will simply, re simply respond, we remember them. You can do this verbally where you are or type it in the chat window. In the rising of the sun and at its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now are part of us as we remember them. Please join me with Amazing Grace number 205. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. 
was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. As we draw our service to a close, we extinguish the chalice and carry within us, within each of us, its healing flame, the warmth of community, and the spark of hope into the days and weeks ahead. As we do so, let us join in saying the mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. We welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey, serve human need and protect the earth, our home. I share with you all these closing words from Frederick Buechner. Memory is more than a looking back to a time that is no longer. It is a looking out into another kind of time altogether, where everything that ever was continues not just to be, but to grow and change with the life that is in it still. The people we loved, the people who loved us, the people who for good or ill taught us things, dead and gone though they may be, as we come to understand them in new ways, it is though they come to understand us. And through them, we come to understand ourselves in new ways too. <laughs>